everyone, it is time for my May wrap up because it's now June, which is crazy. I know everyone has already said that, but it is. Like I said in my last wrap up video, I really enjoyed doing the sit down format. So I decided to, that instead of doing it in a reading vlog, I would do my own sit down wrap up video. As with last month, my statistics will be at the beginning and then I'll include a timestamp below so you know when the actual book talk starts. I managed to read eight books in May, which is a little bit disappointing, so I was hoping to read more, but I got a promotion recently, if you weren't aware, and I've been training for that and life has just been really, really hectic. So I've been busy. I only managed to read eight books and most of them were pretty meh, to be honest. In total, I read 2,559 pages and I listened to 1,454 minutes on audio. I rated zero books one star, one book two stars, six books three stars, zero books four stars, and one book five stars, meaning my average rating was 3.3. .3. As always, it's very middle of the road, but you'll be happy to know that my average rating throughout the year has been going up, so that's good. Three of the books were backlist titles, four were new releases, and one was an advanced reader's copy. I read one paperback, one audiobook, and six ebooks, and as always, my ebook number is way higher than my physical format, even though I've got all of these books that I need to read. Four were adult and four were YA, which I was really happy with because I like to try and balance it out. And when it comes to the genres, I'm just looking at my notebook now, I read one historical book, one fantasy, three contemporary, one sci-fi, one thriller, and one non-fiction, which again, I think is a very good mix, especially considering I only read eight books. Please let me know if you have any other ideas for what statistics I could include. I always enjoy seeing how my reading went during the month and how it varies from month to month, so hopefully it's something you enjoy too. Now I'm going to talk about the eight books that I read. The first one I read was Black Hearts, and I read this when I was up in Edinburgh. This is a YA book. It's a kind of backstory retelling of about Blackbeard, the pirate. It's told from two points of view. There's Anne Barrett, who is a fantastic main character. She's mixed race. Her mother was brought over from the West Indies and her mother had Anne with a merchant and she was raised in a very rich household. And then she was given to another merchant because her half brother gave her away. I don't know why I'm doing that, it's literally what he did. I thought this was a really, really good read. I gave it three and a half stars. I wasn't too keen on the romance because that always lets me down. It was kind of rushed, very insta lovey but it didn't take away from the book too much for me. I'm really looking forward to reading the sequel because I think that's going to be more action packed than this book. This was a very like slow burn kind of introduction to both the characters. The second point of view, by the way, was Blackbeard. I forgot to mention that bit. I then read Caraval by Stephanie Garber, which I gave three stars. I read it because I needed to recap it for recaptains and it didn't really live up to the hype. To be honest, I don't think it was written very well. I enjoyed the concept of Caraval, but it fell into a very generic YA kind of trap with the romance taking over and the weird love interest who wasn't all that great. I thought, yeah, I didn't ship it. I thought he was very like odd because of things that happened towards the end, their love story or romance or whatever was kind of illegitimized in my opinion. I kind of want to read the next book, although I'm not really expecting amazing things because I've seen a few people who haven't loved it. And Justine from I Should Read That read it and reviewed it recently. And she said it's not much better than the first book, so. Who knows when I'll get to it. The third book I read was Nothing Left to Burn. I was really, really excited for this one. It's a debut for this year. It's about a forest fire that destroys this um, like town neighborhood in California. I'm not sure why I was looking forward to it too, so much. I think it's because last year with all the um, wildfires that were happening, I was very intrigued. And then I saw a trailer for that film with that guy that I can't remember the name of, but I was very much looking forward to watching that film, which I still haven't watched yet. And then I found out about the book and I thought it sounded intriguing. Unfortunately, it wasn't. I quite liked the main character. I liked that she wasn't meant to be this likable, perfect, flawless character. She had stuff going on and I kind of enjoyed the mystery of it, but the romance was awful and it was borderline abusive. So that's why I only gave it three stars. I then read Drop by Drop, which was the only review copy I actually read last month, which is annoying because I have so many to read. I gave this two stars, but I was thinking about giving it one because I didn't enjoy it at all. Drop by Drop is an apocalyptic book. All the plastic in the world starts to melt, starting with small things like pen lids or pens. And I thought it sounded really promising. I really liked the concept. It's just, it wasn't executed very well at all. The characters were introduced kind of like willy-nilly, which is a word that I've never used before and I probably will not use again. And their backstories were kind of spouted at us and there was no connection there with those characters. And I don't think the whole survival aspect was done as well as it could have been because I was expecting a world without plastic to be drastically different to our own, but it was kind of just in the background. I then finally finished The Silk Roads, which is a non-fiction book and I actually listened to it on audio, but I've had this book for ages, so. 
I've got it here to show you. I gave this three stars, it felt very dry. I recently read SPQR and I loved it. The Silk Roads, however, wasn't written quite as well. And the narration also wasn't as good, which was disappointing. I do wish it had covered a few things in more detail than it did, um, including the more modern stuff. Although I was surprised that it went from ancient history to modern day Middle East and the relationship with America and the Western world so quickly. I really enjoyed that aspect of it, it's just it felt a little bit rushed and there wasn't enough detail towards the end. So I think it could have expanded a little bit more in certain places. Then I read an adult thriller and that was The Perfect Mother, which I gave three and a half stars. I really enjoyed it, it captivated me and I was very intrigued to see where it was going. I did discuss this in a reading vlog but The Perfect Mother is about a mother's group who all have babies around the same time and one person's baby goes missing and then the other mothers try to figure out who did it because they're convinced that something dodgy has gone on. I mean, something dodgy has gone on, but they're convinced that it wasn't the mother's fault, if that makes sense. I did have a couple of theories with this one, but mostly I was in the dark and that was done really well. I kind of enjoyed the ending, except I'm not really sure how I feel about all of these thriller books doing the same thing. Like all the domestic thrillers seem to have the same sort of twist or villain as it were. That's all I'm going to say about this book because I'm probably going to spoil it if I carry on talking. Then I read If We Had Known, which is contemporary fiction about a guy who shoots up a mall. It's told from multiple points of view. One of those is the professor who taught him in his freshman year of college. He wrote what was described as a weird paper about guns and hunting. And people are saying that the professor didn't handle it as well as she should have. She should have caught on perhaps to this guy's psychotic, sociopathic tendencies. I'm not really sure what you would call it, but she didn't, so she gets a whole lot of shit for that, and then it's also told from her daughter's point of view, and a couple of other minor ones, but it was mostly these two. I don't really know why the daughter's point of view was in there, because it felt unnecessary, and I also didn't like her. There was this one scene where she said that girls who dress up for Halloween are slutty, and she was better than them, so I was just kind of like, nah, don't like you. It also tried to address anxiety, which I think it did an okay job of. I enjoyed it, it was okay, wouldn't read it again probably wouldn't recommend it. But it was interesting to see how the shooting affected people other than those who had been shot and the families of the victims. So I gave that three stars. And finally, I read my second favourite book of the year, or maybe my favourite, I'm not sure, Girl Made of Stars, which is a contemporary YA book. And trigger warnings right off the bat, uh, this book covers rape and sexual abuse. I love this book so much, I gave it five stars, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. It's about a girl who's twin brother rapes her best friend who he was dating. And obviously the main character wants to believe her brother, but she ultimately believes her best friend because she does deep down believe that he could have done something like that. And she has been raised to always believe the woman within reason, obviously. It addressed the hypocrisy of this family who had always said, you know, you should believe the victim, women aren't believed enough. And then when their son does something, or a member of their family does something as awful as raping someone, they're quick to defend him and they can't be told that he is in the wrong. It was a very emotional read, I cried and it was very, very well written. On top of all of those things that I just mentioned, the main character is bisexual and she is in love with slash dating slash interested in a non-binary character. So if I haven't just sold this book to you, then I'm sorry, I don't know what else I can say about it. Those were all the books that I read and finished. I also started Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is an adult contemporary fiction novel. Um, I, I've seen it described as a thriller but it hasn't really got to that status yet. I've only read 170 pages so far so it might pick up but I'm really really enjoying it so far. I can't put it down, I'm really looking forward to finishing it tonight. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I will speak to you in my next video. I'm planning on doing a June TBR as well as a couple of other videos sprinkled throughout the month and I'll obviously carry on my reading vlogs. Let me know what your favourite book of May was because I would love to know. I want some more recommendations. Thanks for watching, bye!